Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Spokane Community College's presentation of The Shadows. This is an exciting reader's theater version of two vintage scripts. The characters are in a radio program, comic books and films. Tonight, we will present The Shadow as it is, The Shadow. There will be a 10-minute intermission between stories, and please turn off all cell phones, and if you want to take pictures, that's okay, just make sure that the flash is off. And we would really appreciate it if you Spread the word and tell the people to come see it. We have one more show tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And thank you very much for coming and we hope you enjoy the show. Sounds tremendously important. Who invented it? 
this man, Archelaus, who was supposed to demonstrate it last week at the proving grounds before a large delegation from the capital, besides the members of the War Department, a great many high officials and other branches of government were to attend the tests. Well? Since your friend Wilson gained access to the laboratory and put the flying torpedo out of commission, the test has been postponed until tomorrow. And who is Archelaus? Where did he come from? A famous foreign inventor. He's quite a reputation abroad. Mama, you don't suppose it's possible Archelaus has the boy under some strong mental influence? It's possible. They've got Wilson temporarily in the city jail. Won't you call on him as the shadow? Margo, do you honestly think this case warrants my attention as the shadow? Lamont, I don't ask many favors, but I have a feeling John Wilson is innocent. All right, Margo, if you're really serious, the shadow will pay a call on John Wilson in the city jail. Lieutenant Wilson is in the last cell, Professor Archelaus. Thank you, God. This pass that General Levitt gave me, will you take it or do I keep it? You better keep it, sir, in case you want to use it again. Yes, that's right. You'll have to talk to Wilson through the bars. No one's allowed in his cell. Thank you. I have no desire to go in. I already had one arm in a sling thanks to the young man's temper. There's only one or two questions I want to ask him, then I'll leave. Very well. Well, who is it? You, Archelaus? Don't get excited, Lieutenant Wilson. I only came to tell you that you're a much better mechanic than a marksman. Your bullet only injured my arm. I'm only sorry I didn't... I didn't... Kill me? The only way you can break the spell I have over you, isn't it? To kill me. Will somebody... Stop! Look in my eyes. Look! No. No, I won't. Look in my eyes. No. Look in my eyes, Wilson. Uh. That's right. Uh. Now repeat after me. I destroy the torpedo. I destroy the torpedo. Say it. I. I destroyed the torpedo. Sabotage against my country. Sabotage against my country. I. Guilty. I am guilty. And that is all you remember. <laughs> Are you sure that's all he remembers, Professor Archelaus? Who said that? God, you're there. No, not the guard, Professor. He's waiting at the end of the passage. You hide somewhere in the next cell, perhaps. No, I am here. In the shadows, Professor Archelaus. Perhaps you've heard of me. Who are you? The Shadow. The Shadow? Help me. Help me. I'm your friend, John Wilson. Think now. Concentrate. What is it you're trying to remember? It's that torpedo. Dangerous. I... Wilson, be quiet. Steady now. Think. Think. You can break through this spell. I tried to make them understand. Stop. I destroyed the torpedo. I command you to stop. John, your friends believe in you. They're trying to help you. Wilson, what have you committed? Sabotage. Sabotage against my country. I am guilty. I am guilty. So, Mr. Shadow, whoever you are, you see? You have a powerful spell over the boy, but there is a way to break it. What way, Shadow? If you don't know, I have no intention of telling you yet. Margo Lane, Margo Lane, stand by. Archelaus has put Wilson under some strong mental influence, a sort of hypnotic telepathy. The voice of conscience is dominated by the thoughts Archelaus passed there. We must weaken Archelaus' hold on Wilson's mind so we can find out if he's guilty or not. Stand ready for another call. 
Tonight I'm going to pay a surprise visit to Professor Arcalis at his hotel. I have a feeling that if we're not successful in getting Wilson to talk, this country of ours may suffer a terrible disaster. Anyone follow you here from the hotel? No, no one, Professor Arcanus. Good. The test will take place tomorrow? Uh, yes, uh, at 3 o'clock. The War Department is so convinced your invention will render any nation possessing it invincible that the high command of both the Army and Navy are to be there to witness the test. The President, too? Yes, President and the Vice President expect to attend together with the Secretary of War and the Secretary of the Navy. So, they've fallen into my trap. They'll be blown off the face of the earth just as I planned. Balov, be sure you make a final inspection before the torpedo is taken out of the grounds and see that the steering mechanism is set. Uh, I, I understand. But since I am your chief assistant, they might ask me to go along with them. Ah, they won't ask anything. Their bungling army mechanics think they understand the flying torpedo perfectly. So to satisfy their pride, I've let them take complete charge of the demonstration. Good. So don't worry, Barlow. And afterwards? Afterward, with the guiding brain of the nation wiped out in a single stroke, the country will be thrown into confusion. Disorganized, so we'll have nothing to fear. I see. There are only two things that bother me slightly, though. Lieutenant Wilson, for one. Wilson? Did, did he really discover the secret trick of the steering mechanism? Yes, he knows what we intend to do and what, how we intend to do it. You should have disposed of him at once. I thought of that. I was afraid it would arouse suspicion. But I'm keeping Wilson under mental hypnotic control until it's too late for him to stop us. Wouldn't it be better if he were dead? Perhaps. I can still visit him in the prison. And uh, what is the other thing that bothers you, Professor? Only a shadow, Barloff. I'm not quite sure of the extent of its power. A uh, shadow? Don't worry. I think I can take care of it, too. Is it? I thought I heard footsteps outside in the hall. Go and look. There's no one here. The hall is empty. Must be my nerves. I'll be glad when this is all over. Our escape is taken care of? Yes, the freighter will be waiting for us at South Pier. But go now, Carl, and success to you. Good night. Good night, Barlow. Oh. The shadow. If I can't put my willpower against a shadow, then I deserve to lose. But I've left. <laughs> Good evening, Professor Arcanes. You, the shadow, you've come. Yes, Professor. Why do you hold Lieutenant Wilson in a hypnotic spell, Professor? I don't know what you're talking about. We shall see. And now I have something else to tell you. What? Wilson knows something about you, Professor, and I'm going to find out what it is. All right, Shadow, you know a little, but you'll never learn more than from Wilson. No one can break the spell, not you, nor all your childish magic. You forget greater magic, Archelaus. What? Death. Death? Yes, it's on the way, Professor. I can promise you this. If any blood is shed, it will be yours, not the shadows. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Cranston. Go right ahead, General. 
Hello, General Levin speaking. Oh, hello, Captain Hines. That's fine. You have the flying torpedo loaded and ready for the demonstration? Good. I'll expect a report. Uh, sorry I can't be with you. Goodbye. And now, Cranston, to get back to this uh, Lieutenant Wilson. I don't see what I can do. But there may be some desperate plot at the bottom of this. Wilson acts as if he'd been put under some powerful hypnotic spell. He might know something about this flying torpedo that you ought to know. For heaven's sake, Cranston. I haven't time to listen to any such drivel. I know, you're a very agreeable young man, and you mean well, but you're letting your imagination run away with you. Now, if you don't mind, I must get ready to leave for the capital. Very well. Just do me one favor, General Levitt. It might prove something to you. What is it? Suggest to Professor Arcales that he be present with the other official visitors at the proving grounds when the demonstration starts. <laughs> Of course Professor Arcalis will be there. Why wouldn't he be? That's what I'd like to know. Unless I'm very much mistaken, General, Professor Arcalis has made arrangements to be far, far away from the scene of his triumph. By George Cranston, I believe you know something. Excuse me, sir. Well? There are two men here to see you, Professor Arcalis and another man. All right, show them in. General Levitt will see you now. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you, General Levitt. That's all right. Uh, this is Mr. Cranston, Professor Arcalis, and Mr. Barlow. How do you do? How do you do? If you don't mind, Mr. Cranston, I'd like to speak to General Levitt alone. Not at all. I'm sure you have weighty matters to discuss. Good day, gentlemen. Thanks, Cranston. Goodbye. Uh, oh, orderly. Yes, General Levitt? Is my luggage ready? Yes, sir. Fine. Then take the next train. There's one leaving in uh, 20 minutes. Can you make it? Yes, sir, if I go now. Go ahead, then. I'll close the office. I'll meet you in the Capitol tomorrow. Yes, sir. Well, what brings you here, Professor? Oh, uh, s sit down, Mr. Barlow. Thank you, sir. Barlow here has just returned from the Proving Grounds, General. He supervised the roaming of the torpedo early this morning. Everything was all right, I hope. Perfect. Your army mechanics seemed very proud. They want to handle the torpedo by themselves. Of course, we'll be anxious to know how it comes out. Oh? Aren't you going to be at the demonstration, Professor Archelaus? I'm afraid not. Another engagement, unfortunately, prevents my attendance. Yes, I see. But I can't understand how anything could be more important to you than seeing your own invention demonstrated before the highest officials of our government. I admit I'm terribly disappointed, General. However, I've left instructions for a telephone message to be sent to me at my hotel the minute the demonstration is over. Professor, I'm not sure that this test should be made without your being there. What do you mean? Suppose I order you to go. But, no, that's impossible. Why impossible, Mr. Barloff? You must excuse Barloff, General Levitt. He gets a little excited. Excited? What about? Look here, Professor Arcalis. Why don't you want to go to the proving ground? Must I repeat my previous statement? The stalling and hedging is very suspicious. By George, you'll go whether you want to or not. Don't touch that phone. Barloff, be careful. You can't give me orders in my own office. You hit him hard, Barlow. His head was bleeding. He, he, he struck the desk when he fell. Drag him into this closet and bar the door. He knows something, Professor. Or suspects something, but how? Then uh, we, we've got to act quickly. I wonder if Lieutenant Wilson has talked. But you said he was still under your head. Not expel. Perhaps it would be better if Lieutenant Wilson dies. Yes. Are you going to murder him? No. I'll merely suggest that he kill himself. Now, Barlow, if you'll tie up the general. Professor, look at him. What? General Levitt is dead.
Here's General Leffitt's office, Margot. No one seems to be here, Mama. That's odd. The General was here less than an hour ago. General! General Leffitt! Look! Here on the corner of the desk. Blood. <coughs> Ring Commissioner Weston at once. Tell him something has happened to General Leffitt. Yes. Anything else? Yes. Tell him to send a squad of men to South Pier. I overheard Professor Arkelis and Barlow talk about meeting on a freighter there. Where are you going? I'm going to the jail. I'm going to make one more desperate attempt to get John Wilson to talk. We've got to find out what this is all about before it's too late! Look out, he's got a gun. Well, 
Sorry, Sergeant. I had to do it. That's okay. This arc legs will probably be along in a minute. Let's put this bird behind those boxes. We don't want arc legs. Hey, look out. Here comes another guy down the dock. Right. Quick. Behind this pilot. Come on. Let's be arc legs. Yeah, I guess so. Professor Argelis? Who are you? The police. We want to ask you. You can't get me to talk. You'll never make me. Look out, Sarge. He's got a gun. Drop that gun. You can't take me. The police can't touch me. Okay, you asked for it. That'll handle it. Did he get you? Nah, I'm okay. Ah, here comes the... Nah, they didn't have time. Oh, Commissioner Weston? Yes, Sergeant. I see you got our man. Yeah. Is he dead? I don't think so, sir. Well, Arkelius, maybe you'll talk. I'll never talk. Commissioner Weston. Shadow, what are you doing here? We can't waste time, Commissioner. Did you stop the test of the flying torpedo? Yes, but... Good. Commissioner, you've saved the lives of thousands of spectators, to say nothing of some of our highest government officials. Then it was you. Yes. Yes, I had a friend of mine call you. And now, Professor Archelaus, let's hear the story. You haven't much time. I know. I'm dying, Shadow. It was a plot against our national defense, wasn't it? It was. Who employed you to do it? That I won't tell you. But Lieutenant Wilson is innocent. Yes. Wilson is innocent. Commissioner, you're a witness. Lieutenant Wilson is cleared. Yes, Shadow. But what about General Levitt? Barloff killed him. Where is Barloff? We've got him behind these boxes. How? How did you know about General Levitt, Shadow? We found blood on his desk. But this time, the blood is yours, Archelaus. Yes, mine. Well, Shadow, Archelaus is dead. Yes, Commissioner. And you've been instrumental in averting a national calamity. Archelaus is dead. The innocence of Lieutenant Wilson has been proved. And the integrity of the men who protect our liberty is again vindicated. <laughs> As you so evil, so shall you reap evil. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Hey! 
gentlemen, we interrupt this program of organ music to bring you a special news flash from our affiliated press service. New York, December 12, 1937. The shadow has been found. Dr. James Evans, world's famous child surgeon, told reporters this afternoon that a wounded man who claimed to be the shadow forced his way into Dr. Evans' private clinic and at the point of a gun forced him to remove a bullet. The wounded man then revealed that he was none other than the mysterious character who has waged a one-man war against crime, the Shadow. Before Dr. Evans could report the case to the police, however, the Shadow mysteriously disappeared. The famous surgeon believes the Shadow has little chance of surviving his wound. Our organ recital now continues. Hello, Dr. Evans speaking. <laughs> Dr. Evans, the man you claim to have operated upon was a fake. The real Shadow has not been wounded. The Shadow? You are the Shadow? Yes, Dr. Evans. You don't seem surprised. I'm not. I've been hoping you'd get in touch with me. The statement I issued was false. False? Come now, Dr. Evans. A man of your high standing in the medical world does not issue false statements without very grave reasons. There was a very grave reason. I need your help. An old acquaintance of mine, Raymond de Brill, the financier, has received a death threat. Have him notify the police. No, he refuses to do that. Then let him take the consequences. Unless... Dr. Evans, have you also received a death threat? Yes. Before I made this call, I investigated your past, Dr. Evans. My past is a matter of public knowledge. You were once a political prisoner on Devil's Island. You escaped 20 years ago with three other men, Raymond de Brille, the banker, and Pierre Martin, the concert pianist. Yes, but our convictions were reversed by the High Court a year after we escaped. I know. It was proved that you three were innocent. But what about the fourth man who escaped with you? The murderer. Doug Corvain. He was caught and sent back to Devil's Island. After the escape, one of you betrayed him to the police. I don't believe that. Why else should he mark you for death? Then you know, Corvain escaped from Devil's Island his second time, six months ago. Yes, Dr. Evans. Then you're interested? You will help? Yes, I will help. But only because your life is in danger, Doctor. The world can ill afford to lose the skill and genius that has saved the lives of countless children. You overestimate my importance, Shadow, but you will help. Yes. When and where does Corvée's warning say he will strike first? At Tabril's Long Island estate, tonight. How do you know this warning came from Corvée? Tabril received a miniature music box in the shape of a coffin in the mail this morning. A musical coffin? Yes. And when the lid of the coffin is raised, the music box plays a tune. A tune Dubril, Martin, Corbet, and myself whistled as a danger signal when we were escaping from Devil's Island. Where is Dubril, Dr. Evans? At his Long Island estate. Martin is staying with him, and I am driving out there to spend the night. I had hoped you would come and help. I will help you, Dr. Evans. Tell Dubril and Martin that the shadow will be there tonight. No, Miss Lane, he's not. Do you know where I can reach him? He may be at his club. No, I'm right there. Well, his office? Yes, everywhere. Nobody's seen him all day. Was well, there anything I can do? Be sure and stay here in case he comes home. I'll call you on the phone later. Yes, Miss. I've got to find him. I've got to. I've just got to. I've got to find the lot. Maybe Dr. Evans knows more than he told the newspaper. His office. He said he might be at home. Number 33. Yes, this is it. Oh, Lamont, I know they'd shoot you someday. Yes, miss. Is Dr. Evans here? I must see him. I beg your pardon, miss, but are you another reporter? Yes, and I must see Dr. Evans. It's important. It's a matter of life or death. I'm sorry, miss, but Dr. Evans has 
has nothing to say to the press. He's not at home. But I must see him. I must find him. I'm sorry. That car. That's Dr. Evans' car. Yes, miss. Where is he going? I'm not at liberty to say, miss. Never mind. I'll find out myself. Taxi! Taxi! Okay, miss. Where to? Follow that big black limousine, the one with the green cross on the license plate. That's a doctor's car, miss. I may have to break a lot of traffic laws when go through red lights. Never mind. I'll pay the fines. But don't lose sight of that car for a minute. Okay, lady, but this is going to be one fast ride. Driver! Driver, slow down! That car is turning into that estate. What do you want me to do? Go through the gates after it? No, no, stop here. Okay. Here's five dollars. Hey, thanks, ma'am. I wonder if this is just a wild goose chase. Lamont could be way out here. Not if he's wounded, dying. That car, it sounds like. Oh, but it could be. It is! It's Lamont! Lamont! Marco? Marco! What in heaven's name are you doing here? Oh, Lamont, then it wasn't true. You weren't shot. Dr. Evans didn't operate on you. Oh, so you heard about the news flash too? The papers are full of it. I tried to find you at your office, at home, at your club, everywhere. I'm sorry, Margo. I should have known you'd worry, but I've had a very busy afternoon. Uh, how did you get here? I followed Dr. Evans' car. He just drove through those gates. What happened, Lamont? Are you trying to find out why he said he operated on the shadow? Is someone imprisoned impersonating you? No, no. Dr. Evans did that knowing I'd get in touch with him. He needs my help in a very special manner. But why? Is someone after him? Threatening him? Yes. Also the owner of this estate, the banker Dubril and Martin, the concert pianist. And you're going to help them? I'm interested in helping Evans. He's a great doctor and a great humanitarian. His life is in danger. Lamont, now that I'm here, is there anything I can do? Yes, Margo. Wait in the car. Keep your eye on the house. If you see a light go on and off twice in one of the windows, drive to the nearest payphone and notify the state police to come to the Debril estate. I'll watch for your signal. Fine. I suppose there's no use my making you... asking you to be careful? No, Margo. But I'll try. I'll try to avoid really putting Dr. Evans to the trouble of removing a bullet from the shadow. Oh, what can he do? 
I've had the best private detectives in the country try and find some trace of Covey ever since he escaped from Devil's Island again six months ago. By the way, Debrill, I've always wondered who tipped off the police when Covey was hiding after he helped us escape 20 years ago. Covey was a murderer. We were innocent men. And also, who betrayed me, Debrill, the time I tried to escape alone the first time? Martin, Debrill, now listen to me. A moment ago we were talking about the Shadow. Well, he isn't dying. I didn't operate on him. I announced that hoping the real Shadow would get in touch with me. Did he? Yes, he's coming here tonight to help us. I've always been curious to see this Shadow. You won't see him. No man has ever seen him. But he will be here. Ah, uh, Evans, for a man of intelligence, you're talking like a fool. The age of ghosts and mystic presence. You're wrong, Jibril. You're wrong. Because I am a doctor, I can readily accept the fact that, sh that the Shadow is a master of the powers of mental suggestion, of mass hypnosis. Recent experiments have proven conclusively that... Rubbish! <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to convince him, Dr. Evans. What? What was that? Who spoke then? The Shadow, Dubril. You do not accept the theory of my power of invisibility, but perhaps you will accept the fact, for I am here. Sit down, Gabriel. You look rather pale. If I am to help you, you will all sit down. Sit at that table there. I understand there is little time to lose. I must know the whole story, the truth, if I am to help you. Do as the shadow says. Sit there, Martin, and you there, Gabriel. Well, why don't you talk back, Gabriel? Be quiet, Martin. Dr. Evans, I will help you if I can. But there is one gap in the chain of logic of events leading up to this moment. I'll tell you anything I know, Shadow. Then tell me this. When and under what circumstance did Corvée first threaten your lives? It was the last day we spent in the open boat, in which we escaped from Devil's Island 20 years ago. Storms had blown us off our course. Our food was gone. Our water was exhausted. Corvée. The only one who knew how to navigate was, well, he was slowly dying from hunger and thirst. Water. Water. Oh, be quiet, obey. There is no water. The cask is empty. You're lying, real, all of you. You've been drinking my share. Give me that bucket. Give me a drink of that bucket. Don't. Don't do that. Salt water will kill him. What does it matter, Dr. Evans? Seventeen days in this open boat. Nights of storm and days of blazing heat. Water. Water, I'm dying, I tell you, dying. You're not giving me my share, you're stealing my water. Where will you be if I die? I'm the only one who knows navigation. Be patient, Corvette. It may rain tonight. Well, uh, we may as well be back on Devil's Island. At least there is bread and water there. Bread? Bread, a crust. Just a crust of bread and water. Water. There's no bread, Corvette. The last crust went three days ago. You're cheating. Cheating! You only brought me along to steal the boat, and now you're starving me to death. You don't want me to live, but I will live. I'll get you for this. I'll live to kill every one of you. You, Debrill. You, Martin, and you, Evans. Oh, shut him up, Evans. You're a doctor. You know what to do. Look! Martin, Debrill! Seagulls! What does it matter? We have no gun. I know, but don't you see? Seagulls never fly far from land or a ship. No! Come to the west! It's land! Land at last! You're right. There, to the southwest. You can see the sun on the mountains. We're saved! Free at last! We're big! We're big. Sit up. Sit up. Look, we've sighted land. There'll be food and water. Plenty for everybody. You tried to kill me. Starve me to death. But I'm going to live. I'm going to live until the last one of you is dead. Dead!
beautifully carved. Corvey was a wood carver. He was always handy with a knife. But still, it does not follow that he is the one. Except for one thing, Shadow. When the lid of the coffin is raised, it's a music box. And the tune that it's playing is the warning signal we use while planning our escape from Devil's Island. Remember, only the four of us knew it. Dubril, Corvée, Martin, and myself. Stop it, Evan. Stop that cursed thing. Stop it, I tell you, I can't stand it! So, you have a conscience, eh, Dubril? That danger refrain recalls the past, doesn't it? Stop talking about it. It looks as though Corvey meant business, doesn't it? Don't sit there conniving over me. You forget your turn may be next, maybe tonight even. I am not forgetting anything, Jabril. You better steady yourself, Jabril. I'll get you a drink. Oh, never mind. Here's the decanter. I'll pour it myself. Ah! Oh, that too! Where's it coming from? I smashed the coffin! Good heavens, Jabril! It's the decanter in your hand! Someone, someone changed the decanter! Kobe, he did it! He's here! He's visiting this house tonight! Dubril, where are you going? To my room! I don't trust anybody! I'll be safe there behind locked doors, and if Kobe comes, I'll be ready for him. Wait! Dubril, wait! Let him go, Dr. Evans. He shouldn't be left alone. Corbe may carry out his threat. Are you sure it is Corbe? What do you mean it must be? I couldn't be any it couldn't be anyone else. The coffin, the decanter, are his warning. I know, but you said the four of you knew the signal. Are you sure it isn't one of you? Of course not. I thought you said the shadow was here to help us. I am, but I am content to let events lead themselves to a logical conclusion. You mean, you won't use your power to save us from him? I shall use my power at the moment it is required, Dr. Evans. Right now, for instance, look on the table. There's a note where the decanter was standing. Good heavens, Corvée has been here. Listen to this, Martin. You are the first, and you will die tonight, Raymond Dubril. Shot will break heaven's name on 10. 
throw your knife, Kobe. Thank you, Mr. D. I won't miss. Speak up, Shadow. We will find you anyway. You can't get out. I am here, in the corner. In the far corner. Throw your knife, Kobe. <laughs> Shadow knows. <laughs> 